Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Spoon CCW Live Show. Um, what do we got for you tonight? Obviously, the show is brought to you by Spoon CCW. Um, something I've been forgetting to mention is uh, links to news articles and um, videos and everything that we do is actually in the description for the show. If uh, you want to go check some of that stuff out or share it, then uh, you can get the links right in the description of the show. Um, and like always, uh, you know, say something in the comments. We don't know you're there if you don't say something. So uh, if you're out there listening tonight, um, you know, stop in and say hi. What do we got coming up for a schedule? Uh, tomorrow, basic rifle and carving. Um, 6-6, six, six, concealed carry, we got spots left in that. 6-14, concealed carry, we got spots left in it. 7-11's personal protection in the home, we got spots left in it. 7-12 uh, is going to be personal protection in the home instructor. Um, so if you are a pistol instructor and you want to start working on your defensive pistol instruction skills, then you can uh, get signed up for personal protection in the home instructor. Um, you do have to do both days. 725 and 726 conceal carry. 81 is reloading. And 88 is pistol fundamentals. Um, we still have to get the National Train of Teacher Day stuff lined out. Hopefully we can do that this week. And we'll have something up on it. Um, outside of that, class schedule is up on the website up on the Facebook page, so if you're looking to get signed up for something, then uh, head right on over to the website and get yourself signed up. Um, lots of uh, interesting stuff going on this week. Um, yeah, Got some uh, pros testing going on. Uh, saw something about there were supposed to be some guys up in Canton, and the FedEx guy just... Uh, Told us that uh, they, what they were they were calling up SWAT team members, yeah, uh, putting them on standby for the protest in Canton, bring riot gear. <clears throat> so hopefully that doesn't turn into a into a ruckus up there. Um, we got a uh, we got a range tip training tip this week. Mm -hmm. What do we got going on here? Basically, a range dip. Um, yeah, I know everybody's trying to get out and, of course, get lawn some mow and everything. But if you get to the range, um, go and have fun. Bring some other people with you. You know, you can shoot long range um, as far as extreme range with even 22s or something. There have been times we've gone down to the, the range with just heritage revolvers and, and see off, you know, if you, see if you can hit a paint top at 25 yards or whatever, you know. And uh, you can, you know, place a small bet or just do it for bragging rights, you know, and uh, you don't have to shoot a lot of ammunition. And just uh, make it fun. Um, make it fun for everybody, you know, no matter who's there. And maybe teach some other people how to shoot, too. And get some, some other people involved in shooting sports. And, but... Uh, Take a bunch of different guns and you know, shoot some stuff. Shoot all kinds of things over the course of the day. Yeah, and then make it fun. Yeah, if you have if you have fun with it, it you know it's an enjoyable thing. You know, you're first you're going to be more apt to do it more often, and right. you know it's it's just I mean it's fun. What more can you say about that? And you know you take your friends down there, and you know you set up some targets, and you, you know you. Just some friendly competitions against each other, you know. It's going to help you push, you know, push a little harder to do a little better because every, you know, you you want to try and well, I'm going to beat this guy, I want to beat this guy, or I'm yeah, I'm going to you know, you throw a couple of you, know, everybody throws you know, you got a few guys together and everybody throws a couple yeah. of bucks down on the table and says, I bet you, yeah, right, you know right. that competition that that little bit of competition, you know, that's going to start adding right. a you know. It's not a huge, but a, a small layer of stress to the stuff that you're doing, and yep. you know, yeah. If you want to, you can go to a local supermarket and have a 
fruit shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Fruit shoot. <laughs> yeah. Feed up birds while you're there. You well, the, the other thing is, if yeah. uh, if you're not getting, especially the younger generation, out doing some of this stuff, I mean, it's, the sport's not going to grow. Um, yeah. You know, the traditions aren't going to last. Right. Um, you know, erosion of rights, um, you know, missing clubs, just places to go shoot, places to go have fun. And, and it doesn't, that kind of stuff it isn't even just the, the shooting sports. It's, it's, uh, yeah, you know, outdoor, outdoor activities. activities. Yeah. yeah. All that was um, outdoor. Just right. There's hiking, a lot of hiking, camping, fishing. There's a lot of places, um, local shooting clubs, uh, even in this area that have gone out of business in the last 10 years, um, because of participation, you know, yeah. and, uh, or, you know, they have the wrong participation and, and, uh, you know, manage it. get vandalized and everything you know but uh, but yeah yeah get have out. fun with it have a little fun and uh you know maybe it'll uh help you out a little bit too i mean it, it not every range session i don't think has got to be you know focused and you know goal setting and stuff like that you can and you have to go out and you know just have a little fun from yeah. time to time yep yeah. It looks like you got the think outside the box here for for the carry the tip. Carry tip and four four always rules. Um, you know the the think outside the box works well. Um, you don't have a. I've got a video for us tonight, but it's not a uh, you know defensive gun use. It's more more of a, a training style thing, and uh, it's probably going to be a couple guys that a lot of you folks out there are going to recognize. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to play the whole uh, 10 and a half minute video, but I'm going to play some snippets of it. And once again, the, the link's in the description so you can go check it out. But it's uh, it's got some some good points to it, and it's got some stuff that um, I will take issue with. But for the most part, it, it's headed in the right direction. So I wanted to take a look at that. Um, for always rules, I mean – you yeah. got to apply those to every situation. Right. Range, yeah, carry, doesn't matter. Irregardless of what's going on, you know, in a defensive situation, you know. They're called the always rules because they're always, you know, just because, you know, you know, life and limb is on the line doesn't mean that, you know, neglecting those rules is, it's first off, either can get you injured, somebody else injured, Killed and cause you, you know, undo legal stress because, you know, you may have done everything right, but you didn't, you know. You missed didn't, one. Well, you, you you missed one of those always rules and, you know, you, you sent a round flying or, you you know, you didn't know what was it for or after, your, you know, in front of or behind your target or, you know, some of those things. And, you know, yeah. you, you had you know, bad trigger discipline and you were coming out on target and boom, and you continued on and went through the fight, won the fight, but that errant round went, you know, someplace you really didn't want that to be. And, or you got yourself. Yeah. So, you know, or you got you yourself. Know, those always rules, you know, are there for always. So. Well, which, which really ties into the, the, these always rules really, really tie into the into the video that I want to show you guys, because um, there's a couple of mistakes that are made in there. If you if you look really close, um, I don't know how good the sound is going to be on it, um, but if you go to the link and you you watch the video really close with the sound up, um, you'll be able to tell what I'm talking about, and and I'll point it out in there. There's a couple there's a couple bad mistakes in there by um, the fella that's supposed to be deemed a, a high level professional, but, uh, there, we're not going to really beat that up much that the whole point of the thing is to, is to, you know, really think outside of the box just to keep yourself safe. Mm -hmm. Um, so in that, let's go, let's go check this video out. Um, if I can find it here, here we go. All right. So, uh, this is from Funker Tactical. Uh, if any of you guys out there are uh, Forged in Fire fans, you will immediately recognize Doug Markaita. He's a 
pretty skilled uh, knife guy. And then uh, Instructor Zero has kind of been like a um, social media star as of the last four or five years. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to play this entire thing, but there's a couple snippets here that, that I want to play. And uh, I would encourage everybody to go watch the whole video. Um, and then, uh, you know, let us know what you think. here is not me anybody can do the knife it's that if you have a gun expert who knows what he's doing i think you can cut that 21 foot rule you can cut it because he knows what he's doing now you know in, in the previous videos uh that i've seen the guy with a gun who's got a gun it just doesn't even know what a gun is <laughs> sometimes like, oh, oh somebody comes here i mean they're not experts so what happens easy for the guy to run with a knife anybody can run with a knife so <clears throat> What he's referring to, uh, and, and I want to extrapolate on this a little bit because there's really no backstory to this, <clears throat> is uh, this 21 foot rule. Um, and essentially, it's more of a suggestion, really. But uh, what the rule states is that essentially, inside of 21 feet, that an attacker armed with an edged weapon um, will always get you if you're drawing from concealment um and you're probably going to be really really surprised at uh how easy it is for somebody who is even marginally skilled to get to you inside of that 21 feet there's some drills and stuff that are on the range that you can do uh, i'm not really going to go deep into that at the moment but essentially what they've set up here is two professionals and so what he's alluding to is that most of these gun versus knife videos, um, the, the gun guy is, is really kind of under skilled. Um, they're, they're faded more one direction than they are, um, really pitting two folks of equal ability together. So we're going to fast forward this here and there's a bunch of talking in between here, um, about different things, but we're going to fast forward this to about four minutes somewhere in here would probably work so in the reality condition it's sure that it's rough between now you know what i mean yeah this is the worst case scenario. If now i i i lost here in the reality condition is it's rough what what he's talking about right here to, to add a little bit there is that Somebody is attacking him from the rear with an edged weapon, which is essentially the worst case scenario. Between here. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Why you and and we can see right there that that was no contest. He this particular uh, fellow with the gun is, is pretty fast. Um, so he, he, there was no contest there. That, that knife was, was on him before he could really do anything about it. See? I missed that. Okay, we'll do it again. For, you know? Okay, so say that again. You will, you're only going on his sure. audio. Because cue. in reality condition, it's, it's easy. Because now I know that Doc started to run to me. But I want to start my reaction, really, when I, I heard the noise. And it's very easy to hear the noise here, but there is none, not ambient noise. There is no people here, you know? So I started to relax. Done. And, and you can see right there, um, that once again, e even though he knew it was coming, that, that fellow with a knife was on him before he could get turned and engaged. Mm -hmm. And, and right here is where we start and we start this um as as early on in defensive handgun training as we can um the, your first reaction should always be moving your feet you, you have to create time and distance in in the, in these situations 
And it doesn't matter whether the guy's got a knife or he's armed with a bat or a club or a fist or a piece of pipe he picked up off the side of the street. Inside of these close range distances, you're probably not going to be able to draw and put him on put on target no. enough rounds to stop him. In even if you hit him before he gets to you, he's still got momentum. It's not like he just evaporates into thin air as soon as you hit him. That's not the goal. The goal is to survive the attack. Well, and I I heard this I heard this a lot. You know, I guess it was been a couple of years ago. It's just, just because you hit him doesn't mean he's down. Just because he's down doesn't mean he's dead. Yeah. You know, exactly. You know, and just be, you know, just because he's dead doesn't mean he's dead right now. Yeah. So, you know, the, that guy coming, he's, they're so, so close that, you know, even if it takes, you know, he, he came out and bam, guy got, got to him and bam, he landed a, a perfect femoral artery shot from that low position. The guy's going to, you know, in the course of this fight, the guy with the knife is is going to die. Cause, yeah. Because nobody's going to stop, you know, no, unless he peels off and manages to, you know, stop the bleeding, within a minute or two, he, he's going to die. A minute or two. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you're not going to die, too, from the knife wounds that yeah. he's inflicting. So just think about that, you know, it yeah. it's going to take him a while. You know, it might take, you know, a little less time because his adrenaline is probably going to be up. To bleed out and you know yeah. and die, but you know but the, the amount of in time two and a half seconds that, that it took him to get to you, and he's got a minute after that or two, yeah, to take you out. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a heck of a fight. So let's let's he's gonna bring up a couple more techniques and. I uh... got you. Sure. By the way, they're they're using an airsoft pistol or a cert pistol that that cycles the slide, so they're not using a real fire. As you can see, he couldn't even get turned around. That's the truth. We don't we don't need to demonstrate that is something that is impossible. Huh? We can work on this. We now, now. use your own. Sure. And now I, I show you a different technique for engage. I so now we're going to start on a different techniques. And what I really want to point out is essentially this, this what they're demonstrating, it's an ambush. Um, without a, a whole pile of literally pure luck, there's really nothing you can do about an ambush. I mean, in a public situation... Are you going to hear this fella? Uh, somebody going to warn you? Then you got to take time to process the information. All this stuff is going on. Um, so, for sort of all of that stuff about being aware of all your surroundings and you know, keep a look around and you know, keep your alert levels up and don't you know? Yeah, there's yeah. that right there is the defense against your ambush. Um, head on a swivel. Yep. I don't start. This is a bad condition. I have concealment, uh, concealment condition. My uh, my shirt is not too large, so I need to grip out. You see, it's a blocket. It's not so large. I want this. I don't want. After we can try also like this, but now I want to work like this. Okay. Okay. So you saw right there. He probably got. Well, he actually, he got two shots off, okay? Um, but he got two shots off. We go right back to the fellow with the knife isn't dead yet. So he doesn't evaporate. You can see the position which they're in right now. He still took injury from the knife, okay? So... Number one, you're going to have to be, you know, fully aware that it, you get into something like this. You, you may take injury. It's a high probability you're going to take injury. You have to limit that damage. Um, so, you know, that's one thing that needs to be really pointed out. Um, where I have the problem with this particular um, 
demonstration isn't his technique. It's the fact that he goes for his gun first in this technique. Now, a little later, he will start to move first, but he gets really complicated in his movements, something that the general public probably isn't going to do, um, would be very hard to practice and could be detrimental practicing it. So let's, uh, let's move on. Let's play a little more. This here. What was that? <laughs> but this is the first part. And we can make these and these, 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 or these, these, and these. For the reason of the technique that we can go to applicate. And once again, you can see the knife is still underneath of his shirt. Yeah. So he got there before his concealment garment dropped back down over his yes. holster from him drawing the gun. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> fancy move, effective, I, I have my doubts at the moment. Um, we're going to fast forward this a little bit because they go through this three or four times. We're going to fast forward this about eight minutes, okay? Um, try right here. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So. And this is on the back. Where's that tree? This is on the back. This is on the back. Now, thinking in the front. They're in the front. It's not. Yes, it's just a little bit more easy. But not too much. Because when I saw, if I am relaxed, I don't know. I see a lot, a lot of fields. So. The thing with the barrel roll, it works. It gets it. It gets him his time and distance. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think I'd have drawn the gun before I barrel roll. No, I. Um, mm -hmm. and and you're gonna see where he makes some pretty serious mistakes with this cert pistol. Um, what we see, and I think the point that is missed here is, um, my mom would not barrel roll like that. No, no, she wouldn't do it. Uh. You know, my wife probably wouldn't do that. Um, that would be the furthest, furthest thing from her mind. Even, even training to do something like that, yeah. I, I don't see a large portion of us being able to accomplish that. Um, could I barrel roll like that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it'd be an issue. Till the following morning, I in, just, my, in my mind, my version of a barrel roll in that situation would be fall down. And and he does he does get into that right, mm -hmm. um, but that I would probably trip over my own shoelaces for Pete's sake before I would get this barrel roll accomplished. That's just my luck, but it is what it is, right? And and that start, I'm going to try to. So we're gonna I'm move going on to here. Something like that. Now, okay. Reach distance faster going down. This is this is an acceptable move. I do, I think that would actually be a better alternative because like Mr. Mike Markaida, uh, a guy's name Doug, points out, the knife attacker has to change momentum and direction to get at him. Mm -hmm. Caution, your legs are going to be in the way. And if you watch quickly, about the third time he does this, he clips his own leg. So... And he also says, use your legs to create distance, which is fine if you're muzzle aware and you don't hit your own leg. So let's that see that I, one again. Good to have like that. Creates distance faster going down. I can't reach it. What does that mean for you that he's down now? Your target yeah, change. You see it. Here it is easy. I've got momentum for myself. Also, if I shot I can reach. Now, from a high level to all of a sudden down, I have to change. Right I there. I change my trajectory. And which allows my right leg here that can make a distance. So, when, if I saw someone on the front, am I lucky that I had someone on my front and I lost the time? I'm sure it does it again. And this is the last chance that I get. 
<laughs> so, <clears throat> rolling to your back in a knife attack could be a viable option uh, if you can't move laterally, laterally. laterally quickly enough. It's just really important, as and if you can, if you noticed, I kind of pointed him out there. Um, twice, twice he he makes that airsoft pistol cycle with his own leg in the way. So you you have to be muzzle aware, you have to be body aware, you have to know where your extremities are going to be at, and you're going to have to practice this. And I recommend starting out with an unloaded firearm, doing it to begin with. And, you know, kind of leading that, like, you know, kind of our carry tip there, the, you know, the always rules. Yeah. Yeah, that, that leads right to the always rules. Mm -hmm. The always rules work. Always. Always. I don't know how. I, I, I guess it just boggles my mind how we, you know, time and time again, we, we come in contact with people and see people and talk to people and stuff like that that are just... Oh well, yeah, it's okay. Like, what don't yeah. you get about always? Yeah, always, always is always. Um, there's there's a couple of things that I probably would uh, try, and I think it, it would be fun to try and test some of this stuff. I'm gonna see if we can get some rubber knives, but uh, I personally, I think um, you know we're always talking about time and distance. Um, I think I think lateral movement, if you're capable, is gonna work. Um, going down to the ground would work. Uh, you know, there's a couple other ideas that I got in my head and I think maybe if we get the chance, we'll test these out, but, uh, there's some, there's some good stuff in here. And the whole point of the video is that you have to create time and you have to create distance. You, you can't just stand there like the, you know, an old Western movie and quick draw the dude into submission. It just will not work. You no. you need to distance and cover. I mean, that is, and that's something that they don't, they don't get into. And with the limitations of this video, I mean, just putting a, a folding table in that room would, would change the whole dynamic of that. Yeah. yeah and right? I think, they, and I think that they're that like, as part of their video of showing them, you know, they're in this, you know, pretty much, you know, this wide open, quiet room. There's, None of the none of the life distractions or anything like that, and I, I think it actually, I think the video does a good job of of showing you know that very little of the you know without creating that time and distance and just trying to you know stay a, you know in the confines of that small area is for the most part you know detrimental. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you got have it. to move. You have to move. You have to move your feet first. You can't you can't rely on that on that firearm to get you out of this situation. You get you out of this situation, use the firearm as the tool to do so. So that's our that's our uh, our tip for today. Use your head. Um so we got some news. Um I'm sure everybody's pretty aware that there's some some pretty nasty stuff going on out in Minneapolis, um, but uh, there's some there's some stupidity going on too. Um, and I heard this on the radio. I, I had to go check it out this morning. Uh, the CNN crew was arrested while giving a live television report Friday morning in Minneapolis, and then they were released an hour later. Um, I don't. I don't haven't seen why they were arrested. I heard some audio tapes and they were telling them to move. And um, this correspondent, Omar, looks like Jimenez, uh, is producer and photojournalist shortly after 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Eastern, as Jimenez was reporting live from the street south of downtown near where the police precinct building was earlier set ablaze. So it it looks like they were probably trying to, to cover the fire at the mm -hmm. at the police station. Right. Um, he could be seen holding a CNN badge while reporting, identifying himself as a reporter, telling the officers the crew would move wherever officers needed them. 
An officer gripped his arm as Jimenez talked and then put him in handcuffs. Uh, we can move back to where you're like. We are live on the air here. Put us back where you want us. We're getting out of the way. Wherever you want us, we'll get out of your way, Jimenez said to police before he was led away. Um, we were just getting out of your way when you were advancing through the intersection, Jimenez continued. Police told the crew they were being detained because they were told to move and didn't. One member of the CNN crew relayed to the network. Um, and uh, I, I guess you can you can probably watch the video that's attached to this, but uh, I watched it. I, I didn't see where they were really. I mean, they were there. They would have moved had the guy told them where to go, but he really didn't. Um, yeah. And I, anybody who knows me knows I'm absolutely not a CNN supporter whatsoever. Um, but this guy was just doing his job. I mean, he was a reporter there covering this stuff, so – there was absolutely no reason to arrest this guy. Um, and on a police department that's already got a massive black eye, this yeah. is this is just well, makes the, the thing worse. Arrested. Yeah, well, I mean, it just didn't help. Yeah, any so of the troopers no, were clear. Didn't help any of the situation. No, it no. didn't help it whatsoever. I mean, no. The, the guy was non-combative. He was he was calm. I mean, even if he was being a pain in the butt, th that's not a crime. I mean, no. um, and and you know the the police weren't making an arrest. He wasn't interfering with anything. I mean, right. I, it just it just it, it, fueling the fire in a bad situation. Um, later, after the crew was freed, Waltz told reporters, "We've got to ensure that there is safe spots." For journalism to tell the story. Um, I think that's probably pretty pretty clear. Troopers were clearing the area at Walt's direction, he said, adding there was absolutely no reason for the journalist's arrest and he takes full responsibility. Um, Jimenez and the other producer, Bill Kirkos and photojournalist Leon Mendez had been taken to the city's downtown public safety building after their arrest were released after 6 a.m. Central. Jimenez, after his relief, release reported live outside from downtown, said he'd been treated cordially after he had been led away. We're doing okay now. There were a few uneasy moments, Jimenez said. The Minneapolis State Police Patrol said this about the incident. In the course of clearing the streets and restoring order at Lake Street and Snelling Avenue, four people were arrested by state patrol troopers, including three members of a CNN crew. The three were released once they were confirmed to be members of the media. That is where I have issue. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're members of the media or not. No. You, you don't just pick scoop people up off the street. Like, what were they charged with? Yeah. Papers, please. Well, you know, I mean, that's like, jaywalking? That's, yeah. I don't, <laughs> I mean, like, you know. I don't get it. So, um, it's just that's just a bad situation for everything that's going on. It's a it's a bad situation. And a, on a calm day, this would be crap. We'd be talking about this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, on a ruckus day like today, this just makes it infinitely worse. And so throw gas on the fire. Yeah. You know? um, so whoever was responsible for this, I mean, use your friggin' head a little bit. I mean, the guy's holding a microphone for Pete's sake. Yeah. He yeah. didn't carry that three-pound microphone around because he thinks it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. I mean. <laughs> the guy, well, guy with a camera, camera on his shoulder. I mean. If he's not hey, it's not even like a little mini little JV. No, it's like the big yeah. news. It's not like he's holding yeah. up a phone filming him. Yeah. Yes. I mean, probably you know, weighs like 17 pounds. Yeah. And, you know, that brings up a good point, though. When, when members of the media finally get the little cameras – what are they going to do then? Yeah. I mean, if you got – my cell phone's got a 4K camera on it. I say, how big are our cameras going to be when news media finally gets the little ones? Right? Yeah. I'm going to have to buy the jumbo like like the freaking jitterbug phones with the big buttons and <laughs> <Yeah>. crap. <laughs> um, I read this one earlier. This is pretty good. Kansas soldier – let me get to the title here uh, – Kansas soldier uses a vehicle to stop an active shooter, likely saving countless lives. Um, I think we talk about this every concealed carry class, how 
your pistol is is kind of a a crappy weapon, sort of say. And people ask about cars and different things like that. And a car is a far more effective defensive tool than than a pistol yeah. could ever live up to be. Thousand pound. In most missile. situations, right? Um, yeah. There's there's a lot that the car won't do, but I mean, this is just good thinking. Uh, active duty soldier at Fort Leavenworth in Kansas was being hailed as a hero after police say he saved multiple lives by ending an active shooting Wednesday morning. Leavenworth Police Chief Patrick Kitchen said officers were called to the Centennial Bridge at 11 a.m. for a report of shots fired that was originally reported as a result of road rage. When officers arrived, they found one man with a gunshot wound and another man trapped under a car. Emergency crews took both to a Kansas City hospital with serious injuries. As police investigated and spoke with witnesses, they learned it wasn't a road rage incident, but an active shooter who was stopped in the act. Learning this was an active shooter with multiple weapons on the bridge firing at cars with no particular association. <clears throat> there was an active duty soldier assigned to Fort Leavenworth waiting in traffic behind the event. Saw the event unfold, determined it was an active shooter, and intervened by striking the shooter with his vehicle, causing him to be critically injured. Ending the encounter with the active shooter and likely saving countless lives, Chief Kitchen said. man who suffered a gunshot wound is also an active duty soldier at Fort Leavenworth. The shooter is a Platte County resident, police said. Centennial Bridge was closed for the emergency and reopened about 4.45 p.m. The bridge spans the Missouri River and the state line between Kansas and Missouri. Authorities say the incident happened on the Kansas side of the bridge. Um, so... He used the most effective tool he had at that particular time to end, a bad end the situation. situation. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a multitude of reasons why that car was a better defensive tool than the pistol. If he had one, I don't, we don't know, they don't say, but if he had one, um, getting out of the car, taking cover, uh, shots, um, you know, people surrounding them. There's just a multitude of reasons why using the car as a defensive tool, not only can he move faster. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's more effective. I mean, yeah, my, my Tahoe weighs 6,200 pounds. I hit you with it. <laughs> You're going to know it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Most of the time, a handgun takes multiple shots to put the attacker down. When they come in like Buick size caliber, most of the time it's just one. It's not like you had to back up and hit him again, right? No. I mean, he's not Thor or, uh, no. you know, the Godzilla. smallest compact car running into you in parking lot speeds is going to do damage. And yeah, maybe we got some people watch it, you know, watching this that never thought about that. Like you see the people like at Belden Village. Like, they just walk out of the store and out across the parking lot. You know, it's one of them situations, like, I get, you know, pedestrians have the right of way. Shouldn't run pedestrians over. But don't walk in front of my car, because it will hurt you. Yeah. What is right is not always prudent. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, if the pedestrian's shooting at you, um, I think that kind of throws the right of way thing out the window. That throws yeah. the right of way thing out the window, but, mm -hmm. yeah, just, pretty much. Like, the smallest compact car hitting you at parking lot speeds is going to do some damage. Yeah. This this fellow was running down the highway. I don't know what kind of... He said he was in traffic, so I don't know how yeah. fast he was going. But I don't know, but fast enough. They had to get the dude off underneath of the car, so... I'm guessing... I, he said he was in critical condition, so I don't think he was moving all that fast. Yeah. <clears throat> he was doing 60. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he had made it. <laughs> um, man dies following a Holmes County home invasion. Um... Man who suffered a gunshot wound to the head during a burglary died last week. Uh, this Alexander White of Millersburg died at 11 a.m. May 21st at the Akron City Hospital, said Amy Schaefer, forensic yeah. investigator at the Summit County Medical Examiner's Office. Uh, Millersburg, that's down south. I wonder why yeah. they ended up in... Anyway, the cause of death was related to the gunshot wound with a Death listed as a homicide. According to information released earlier this month by the Holmes County Sheriff's Department deputies in Nashville, EMS responded to the 1300 block of Township Road 215 in Knox Township just before 1.30 p.m. May 18th for residential burglary with shots fired. 
Claude M. Hill, 19, in Knox Township, allegedly shot at White in a second man who was later identified as Tyler B. Singleton after they entered his home without permission, according to the release. So <clears throat> this kid decided he was going to go to a rural area and do a home invasion burglary. Let me tell you, that is not a wise idea. Chief Deputy Richard Hahn said Holmes County Sheriff's Department continues to investigate the incident. Singleton was arrested May 20th and faces three counts of robbery, Hahn said. According to Holmes County Municipal Court, Singleton was released on bond after his arraignment Thursday. Now, why did they let him out? He just got done with a home invasion. He scheduled to appear before Judge Andrew Hyde Friday morning for a preliminary. He was released on bond Friday after his arraignment. Don't make he sense. faces charges of tampering with evidence, two kinds of falsification, possession of drugs. Um, so Hill, Hill, Hill was the one, one in the house. house. Yeah. Interesting. So the homeowner. Well, <clears throat> there's a there's a couple lessons. I, I missed that last part when I proofread this, but there's a couple lessons here. And once again, we deal with this on a weekly basis when we're doing concealed carry classes. Um, don't touch anything. Like, don't start moving people around or pulling knives out of the kitchen drawer or anything like that. Just leave it alone. Yeah. And don't have illegal drugs in your house. I mean, I would, I would, I would bet. I would guess that those two guys broke into that house after those drugs. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So bad situation all the way around. So we uh, we got a, a real local news article here. Um, there's a Malvern man in a Carroll County J jail after he presumably stole a vehicle. Uh, Jamie P. Beavers of 403 Pleasant Avenue, was taken into custody at his home the 22nd of May by the Carroll County Sheriff's, who were assisted by members of the U.S. Marshals Service. Around 9.30 a.m. May 19, Ashley Shiflett of Canton parked her white 2010 Hyundai Sonata, oh, Hyundai Santa Fe, at Daystar in Malvern. She left the vehicle running while she went inside the business. When she returned, her vehicle was missing. Shiflet contacted the company with a GPS tracking, and deputies noted the vehicle was in Canton and went to the Walmart Supercenter in Massillon. Massillon police located the vehicle and began a pursuit. It was abandoned when the driver attempted to strike a police vehicle. The GPS location was lost at that time. Deputies then attempted to ping Shiflet's phone, which was left inside the vehicle. It indicated the phone was on Harrison Avenue in Canton. After refreshing the GPS system, the car was tracked and found parked in an alley between Hilltop Learning Center and Malvern United Methodist Church in Malvern. Deputies located the Hyundai and Shiflet identified it as herds. I didn't realize that the Stark County Sheriff's and the, and the Carroll County Sheriff's and Maslin PD were that uh, technologically advanced. Yeah. While viewing security camera footage from the area, deputies saw a male exit the driver's seat of the vehicle wearing a blue Under Armour hoodie. The man walked toward Wood Street and in between the church and a residence. While at Beaver's home, a blue Under Armour hoodie was recovered and evidence gathered from the vehicle. So, in the massive Berg of Malvern, I, I heard car thefts about this. I heard about this the other day. On the rise, we're up to one. So. Every once in a while, somebody decides to stick up the gas station. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So they, they the crime reports one piece of paper every month, apparently. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, you're going to jail, it, though, because you got four bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in in the massive burg of Malvern, um, anybody's never been to Malvern, you can probably throw a baseball across it if you throw it hard enough. Um... Why would you steal a car? Everybody knows whose car it is. If he had just asked somebody, somebody <laughs> probably would have gave him a ride. He probably yeah. would have. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've been parked along the side of the road in Malvern or Maneuver or Carrollton or something like that. 
doing something, talking to somebody, whatever, somebody will stop. Are you okay, man? I'm fine. You know? Yeah. So it, yeah, it's, uh, don't steal cars in Malvern or any other little town for that matter, because they're probably, they're, when the cops show up, they know the person who's driving the thing. So who is so-and-so doing in Jimmy's car? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly yeah. what's well, going on. Well, so-and-so stole, stole Jimmy's car. Yeah. Stole so-and-so stole Jimmy's car. Let's go get him. Yeah. And, <laughs> I'm hey, telling you, gonna call the cops. I'm telling you what. Most of the time, the small town cop they don't have anything better to do but yeah. hunt you down. Yeah. Oh, like a dog on a bone. I don't know how yeah. long this took, but I would, I would bet it was the same day. I would think so. So anyway, what do we got for products of the week? We're gonna go in a little different direction here. Just stuff you, you ought to have on you at one time or another. This goes back to um, non-lethal weapons, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. You stick that in somebody's ear and blow the horn, and they're going to back off. Boat yeah, those horn. are loud. Boat horn really flaxen. Loud. It's a good thing to have in a purse or in your pocket. Glove box of your car. Glove box of your car. <clears throat> this thing says it's... And I don't know anybody who at one time or another... Whether you drive a vehicle or a motorcycle or a boat or or you're just walking along someplace, doesn't at one time or another need some paracord, you know? Yeah. For two dollars and twenty five cents is worth you know taking a ball of it in your pocket. I've had to make shoelaces out of this stuff before. Sure. Yeah. This stuff's flammable. Really? <laughs> it's flammable. Wow. <laughs> so you get yourself a boat horn, horn and a flamethrower all, flame all in one package. I was trying to see what decibels it was reading, yeah. but it doesn't give me a... I think they're, they're to be classified as a boat horn, they got to be 120, yeah. I do believe. Yeah, I could be wrong, but I think it's 120. You'll find them to say emergency horn. They're not quite as loud. One of these, um, this goes back to the fact that you can actually die of hypothermia when it's 70 outside. Uh-huh. So just it ain't a bad idea to have a hat with you. You know, for a couple of bucks, throw a hat in your pocket. You know, and the coat you're wearing or, or a hoodie or whatever, you know. Like keep a beanie in the – there's a, there's yeah. a Carhartt jacket with Six. crap in the pockets yeah. that is just stuck. But one of the things that's in there is a is – a, I got a pair of gloves – and a beanie in a pocket, and that coat lives on the yeah. on the on the back of my driver's seat. That coat well, lives there. What a lot of people don't realize is you when you lose heat, you lose most of the heat you're losing out over your head. So anyway. yeah, you know if it's seventy degrees out and you know it's raining, it's, it's raining, raining, or you know you yeah. broke down or something like that, and you're gonna be stuck on the side of the road for a few hours or anything or you like a flat that. Tire or you can flop yep, around there. Medium. Yep. Stay warm. This one here, emergency stove. Um, you know, I guess you could use this if you had to, um, just to, for some warmth. You know, they, the, that was cold outside. Those little you emergency know? stoves, I actually need These to get pretty some, cool. So you know, more they fold up, so you can you know use them anywhere, and uh, take some four candles or three candles or whatever. You know, well, they come with alcohol tabs. They come with alcohol. I need tabs. to get some more of the. Alcohol tabs that are in here, yeah. Because they, the military ones, burn super hot, but real yeah. fast. These ones burn longer, but not quite as hot, right? And uh, how I out in the woods, deer hunting, just screwing around out in the woods, out hiking. I'll pack, you know, I'll throw stuff in the pack, take it out there, grab this thing, yeah. Cook lunch, eat up a cup of coffee, make some coffee. Seems you know, really good. Yeah, this goes right along with a that. A you know? um, little folding pack grill. You put it in the backpack, take it with you, or in the box in your car or something. If you you want to make a cup of coffee, you yeah, got a metal cup or something like that. You can you know set it up. It takes about two seconds to set this thing up, and most do whatever you want to with it. Or dry pair of gloves on top of it. You know, put some heat underneath it and dry pair of gloves or. Or over the heater in your car or something, you know, it ain't a bad thing to have. And of course, you can put it all in a backpack, just like this. Just one bag, 
And that's really all you need. Put all that stuff in one bag, plus whatever else you can get in there you might need. You know, throw it in the back of your car if you need to take it out. Flashlight, knife, straps. matches, and fire. Yeah. Flashlight, knife, yeah. matches, fire. You know, with a backpack, they're not granola bars. Whatever. Decent backpack, they're not overly expensive. You can no. grab all, you know, all kinds of stuff like this. Throw some water, maybe a little bit of, you know, some snack food. Like you said, matches and you know, little pocket yeah. knife, flashlight. So, you know, a little mini bug out bag, so to speak. You yeah. have, you know, just throw it in yeah. your car. You know, you can right. put all them things in your, you know, you need in your car. You know, maybe you know that yeah. pair of gloves, all those things that you know. Yep. You break down a, you know, I don't know how many times, you know, you get a flat tire. Just think about this situation. Everybody always says, well, I don't need to carry all that. You get a flat tire, kind of out on the side of the road. You can't change your flat. You, you go out, you get to change it. You go out to change it. You break the wrench. You're in a hole, and the jack that came with the vehicle doesn't work, and you can't get it up off the ground. Um, you round a lug nut off. Any one of those other things. Yeah. So now you've been on the side of the road for an hour. And now it starts and, raining. <laughs> and, you know, of course, it's raining because that's when flat that's, tires happen. Yeah, that's when flat yeah tires every time. Um, so, yeah, now you're been, so now you're soaking wet on the side of the road. You've been there for, you know, for an hour. And you got to call a tow truck and or a friend or something like that. You could be sitting out on the side of the road for two, three hours. I know, you know. When I was in school, I broke down on the side of 271. Two miles from Interstate 90, broke down on the side of 271. At the end of January, it ended up being the coldest day of the year. It was 2004. Car broke down. We waited an, over an hour. We waited almost an hour and a half for the first tow truck to get there. The first tow truck showed up. It was too cold for the hydraulics to work. They had to send another one up. We spent three and a half hours on the side of the road in zero degree weather in a car that wouldn't run. We had just moved, you know, we'd been there six months, moved to Cleveland, didn't really have any, everybody else we knew was in school, couldn't really, you know, come. We were, we had one cop stop, asked if we were okay. We said, sure, and he left. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't and, on his car. No, he walked up, said, you guys all right? We're like, yeah, well, I guess so. We got a tow truck coming. He said, okay, and away he went. Yeah. And, you know, we had stuff in the car, and we, you know, got the heavy coats on and the gloves and, the, you know, sure. pulled the hats on, and there we sat. Yeah. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. You're so, it out. you know, a, a, a little bit of preparedness goes a long way. Yeah. Um, the thing is, if you, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a, I, I can't say old adage, but um, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So, you know, well, just a little bit of preparation helps. And, and, and part of that, too, is, is, yeah, been in plenty of situations, just sat on the side of the road for a couple of hours waiting for something or somebody to, Come help me out, and I survived. But we got a little camp stove, a little water, a little cup, pour it out, make a cup of coffee. Ah, cool! I just ain't so bad. It's like camping. I mean, they won't mm -hmm. show up for a while. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. you know Not chocolate. Some of it's just about. Well, if I gotta sit here, I might as well be comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's the thing. You need to take care of yourself. Yeah, you know, and whoever's with you. Certainly. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, that's what we got for you tonight. Um, as always, thanks for stopping by and uh, checking it out with us. Um, suggestions, comments, questions, concerns, let us know. Um, we will see you next to, uh, next week, same time, uh, same channel. So uh, everybody enjoy your weekend, stay safe, and have some fun.